Hi everybody, this is Tracy Chen, the Principal Lawyer at Mason Chen Law Group, and today I want to talk about the Skilled Independent 189 Visa. Started, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with people who need it. As you guys know, Mason Chen Law Group, we are a national firm. Our head office is based in Melbourne. However, we support applicants all around Australia as well as all around the world. I will leave our contact details below. You can book a consultation with myself or one of our fabulous lawyers and migration agents. We also assist with all different types of visa applications. So anything visa related to Australia, you name it, we do it. Now I've also started releasing mini courses. They're available in the link below, courses at tracymigration.com.au. There are some free courses as well as some paid courses which are a little bit more intense that can really help you to basically to lodge a visa application. So anyway, there has been so much, so much movement with the one nine visa over the last two months maybe three since august i think was when we had that first lot and we're like oh my gosh what's going on basically the department started inviting skilled independent 189 visa applicants i mean a lot of people even forgot they had a 189 submitted and they got the invitation and they were like whoa and obviously it's caused a little bit of controversy as well because some offshore have been invited you know before onshore anyway we'll get into that a little bit later however over the last two months, some 20,000 people have been invited to apply for the skilled 189 visa. Now, just because you've been invited doesn't mean that you're 100% gonna get the visa. There are people who have made mistakes. There are people who had documents that expired. So there is actually a big portion of that 20,000 or so invitations that will not be eligible to apply. So there could be more invites to come. Anyway, let's do a really quick crash course on the 189 visa and what it means essentially. Now it is a permanent resident visa. So once you are granted, you will be able to live and work in Australia indefinitely as a permanent resident. And when you meet the citizenship requirements, you can apply for Australian citizenship. Now the cost to apply for this visa is around $4,240. Now the expression of interest, which is the first part of the application, there is no cost associated with the expression of interest. However, once you are invited and you want to lodge a visa application, then yes, you will need to pay the $4,240. You can include your dependent applicants in the application, so your wife, your child, and obviously that will incur a fee at the time of application as well. Now, as you guys know, this is a points tested visa. So you do need to meet the points requirements. It differs from occupation to occupation, the demand at the time. And I don't know what happened, but there was a recent influx of overseas invitations and they had law points and onshore. I'm not sure what happened there. Like, I don't know. The department hasn't explained that either. Because how the 189 works is it doesn't matter where you are. It goes by points. It goes by demand for the occupation at the time, the occupation ceiling, the points, the date that the application was lodged. Where you are shouldn't make a difference. Now you must have an eligible skills assessment in an occupation on the medium term occupation list. That is basically the skilled occupation list that they're referring to. I'll drop a link below so you guys can check that one out. Yep, so you need to be invited to apply for this visa. So what we will talk about today is how to make an expression of interest and how you will be invited to apply for this visa. And then yes, then you go through all the requirements to have this visa assessed, processed, and then be granted the visa so you can live and work in Australia indefinitely. So first of all, you must be invited to apply. So let's go through the requirements of the expression of interest before we go through the visa application requirements and such. I do think the bulk of the hard work is done in the expression of interest, especially for us uh, lawyers and migration agents as well. For our team, we assess everything especially if they're claiming work experience and all the nuances around that. It's actually a lot harder than people think. I know that it seems straightforward. Yeah, how hard can it be? You know, you've got work experience, you're not. But I can promise you, I have seen so many mistakes made in these applications. So I cannot stress how important it is to also get legal or migration advice when you are making these applications because it's a lot harder than people actually think. So what are the requirements to lodge an expression of interest on skill select? Now, for this visa, you actually have to be under 45 years of age by the time you are invited. 
Now, everything that I speak about today, everything freezes at the time of invitation. So if you are so lucky that you turn 45, say next month, and you get an invitation today, you're eligible to apply. That's gotta be like super lucky and a super sign that, you know, Australian migration is for you. However, the age does affect the points. So depending on how old you are, you would get a different number of points. And obviously, you know, the higher the points, the more likely you're gonna get invited. So for points wise, yeah, the optimal points is between 25 and 33 years of age. So you have to not have turned 33 and you have to have turned 25. You get 30 points for that, just an example. If you are 42, okay, so you're under 45, you're still eligible to apply. But if you're 42, you only score 15 points. But to be honest, it kind of balances each other out because if you are older, then you should also have more work experience. So it kind of does work out overall. Second of all, you must meet the minimum English requirements. Now the minimum English requirements is competent English. So IELTS six in each band or the PTE equivalent will be 50 in each band. However, look, to be honest, there's a lot of applicants out there who have superior English. So that is equivalent of eight in each band for IELTS and 79 in each band for PTE. Now there's two employment experience parts. Okay, so if you have overseas work experience, so you've done your bachelor overseas and you have, you know, once you graduated, you completed work experience in that field, then you can collect points for that as well. So for example, if you've done a bachelor of accounting in India, as long as that degree is equivalent to an Australian degree, then your work experience as an accountant after that can be counted. Next is Australian skilled employment. Look, some people have finished a degree overseas then have Australian work experience, or some people have only completed an Australian bachelor of accounting, let's say, and then they have work experience after their accounting degree. Same for registered nurses. So they complete a bachelor of nursing in Australia. They'll graduate, get their registration and licensing with APRA, and they'll start working as a registered nurse in Australia. The work experience after that, as a registered nurse, you can collect points for it. You can't count non-related work experience. So for example, if you have a bachelor degree in nursing and you're working as a support worker um, after you graduate, that's not relevant. If you've done a bachelor of mechanical engineering and you've got work experience after your degree as a software engineer, that is not relevant and you cannot claim points for that. Now, educational qualifications. So again, it ranks in different points. If you have a bachelor or a master's degree, you get some points. And then if you've done a master's by research or a doctoral degree, you get some extra points for that as well. There are some extra requirements surrounding the type of the master's by research degree. So do make sure you do look into that. Next is the Australian study requirement. So you must have studied in Australia on a student visa for at least 92 weeks over a minimum of 16 calendar months. I mean, most people who've done their bachelor or masters in Australia, they're eligible. But again, you have to make sure that you meet the 92 weeks over 16 calendar months. Professional year in Australia. Now this is a tricky one. So it's only relevant mainly for people who've done a professional year in accounting, engineering, or the IT sector. Anyway, you can collect points for that one. Now just to mention here that the professional year does expire. It expires 48 months from the date that you enrolled into the professional year. So 48 months from the date you enrolled, it will expire. So if you exceeded that time, you can't count those points. Now there's this credentialed community language, which we also call it as NATI CCL. It's like a translation course from a language to English. I've never personally done it. Uh, a lot of my clients do do it. Uh, you can collect five extra points for that. Now that one does expire in three years. However, if you completed it after the 9th of August, 2022, the expiry date is five years. If you studied in regional Australia, so while you met the Australian study requirements, so that 92 weeks and 16 calendar months, and you studied in regional Australia, you can also collect an extra five points for that. Now. You can collect points if you have a partner as well, but it basically balances each other out. So if you're single, you get 10 points. So if you have a partner, then you don't get anything. You don't get any points. So you get 10 points for being single. Nothing if you have a partner. However, if your partner gets English, then you can count extra five points. So if they have both English and they have a valid skills assessment in an occupation as the same occupation list as the one you're applying for, 
uh, then you can claim an extra 10 points. So it basically balances each other out. It doesn't mean you get more points if you're a partner. You know, probably more people lose points if they, they have a partner essentially. But obviously you need to declare if you have a partner. So it is what it is. And then you would, you know, complete your application and, and you know, and submit your application. Now there is some specific requirements you've got to be very careful of. So like the expiry dates I just mentioned, English expires three years from the date of the test was completed. Work experience, there's certain requirements for that as well. For example, like the top for overseas work experience is eight years, and it's, but it's in the last 10 years. And do remember that work experience must be post qualification at the required level, minimum 20 hours per week. And you must be able to substantiate your claims. So if you are going to apply for it, then you need to make sure that you have all the documentation to support it, essentially. So anyway, so then you'll do your skill select, you'll have your expression of interest, then you will complete it, you will lodge it, essentially, and you'll wait for an invitation. Now, you must have a valid skills assessment in your nominated occupation. So if you are an accountant, you must have a skills assessment with IPA Australia, or if you're a mechanical engineer, you must have a skills assessment with Engineers Australia. You'll see that in the requirements anyway, like when you're doing the expression of interest, it won't let you move forward if you don't have that valid skills assessment. Now another reminder that skills assessments do expire so be very careful on that one. Um, again every skills assessing body is different so for example Engineers Australia three years, VetAssess three years and MAC which is the one for nursing two years and Australian Computer Society two years. Now, as I said, that is the hardest part of this application. Once you are invited and given that you have everything correct, no documents have expired, you've claimed points correctly, the next part should be pretty straightforward. So at the time of invitation, you must not have turned 45, you must have had a valid skills assessment and all the points you've claimed must be valid as well and you must have the documentation supporting it. I have a lot of clients that are kind of like, oh, why can't we just submit first and then, you know, get the documents later or we find something that you know is rather alarming or you know you can't claim so it's really important that you check your documents and do everything properly before you lodge your application because yeah look there's a lot of action right now with 189 and people are getting invited so the worst thing would be you lodge your application and then you get invited and you're like oh whoops my skills assessment expired or something like that so once what will happen is you will get an invitation in your email that you have been invited to apply uh, in skill select and it's always very exciting but obviously nerve-wracking at the same time because you're like oh no did I do this properly because once you're invited it's locked you can't change it so you know there's not much you can do about it so as long as you scored 65 points or more met all the minimum requirements we just spoke about you will apply for the visa once you apply for the visa you'll need to provide all the documents to substantiate all the claims that you made in the visa application. You will also need to meet the health and character checks. So health wise, you'll be required to do a health test and the character check you'll be required to provide your police clearance certificates. Now that's fine. It's like that in every other country. So, you know, it goes without saying. Australia wants to keep Australia very safe and healthy place. Yeah, so once you've finished the application, you attach all your documents and you're ready to go. You can lodge it. You pay the fee and then it's out of your hands, okay? You do want to submit all your documents and attach all your documents at the time because, you know, we submit decision-ready applications and we don't get any contact from the case officer. Maybe to do health if they haven't got around to doing the health, but that's the first thing we tell our clients to do, get your health check done as soon as we lodge the visa application. To be honest, you know, some 189 visa applications are being granted in like three weeks, three months, six months. It's pretty fast. I have no idea how they are prioritizing applications because we have people who have lodged their 189 two years ago uh, that haven't been granted yet. And then some who have lodged like three weeks ago and got granted. I, I have no idea what's going on there. Anyway, I hope you found that video helpful. Don't forget to share this with people who need it. I know there's a lot of people who want to apply for permanent residency and migrate to Australia at the moment. At the end of the day, I think that Australia, you know what, it is the dream. Affords opportunities like no other country. Maybe I'm biased, but you know, I am very thankful and so proud to be an Australian citizen. Now, I know it's really stressful for a lot of people, but do remember to get the right legal and migration advice before you submit applications. Use this video as a general guide only. Now, if you are interested in me talking in any other topics, drop a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.